Hello again, I am Blonty, and we're back in photo nerd country today. On my table here are my trusty Olympus Pen EP3 and two lenses every Micro Four Thirds shooter should own. Both are also from Olympus. This is their 12mm f2 lens, and this is the 45mm f1.8. And if you don't own, or aren't planning to own these two lenses, and you shoot with a Micro Four Thirds camera, you're a fool, because not only are they a pair of the very best prime lenses you can get for that system, the two of the very best lenses I've ever used full stop. Go on, have a Google around, and you'll find many much more capable photographers than I saying the same things and draping these lenses with praise. Olympus may not be a name as big as Canon or Nikon, for example, but they are doing some stunningly good things at the moment. You need to be paying attention. Now then, I'd like to introduce you to the subject going through the old blunty review machine today. It's another lens from Olympus, not surprisingly, seeing as I've been talking about Olympus lenses. It's a 60mm f2.8 prime lens, and it can do full one-to-one -one macro shooting. On the barrel here, there's a super handy glanceable focal distance gauge, really handy, and around from that is a switch to let you restrict where the lens tries to autofocus, which for the fresh meat shooters out there is handy because if you're just shooting macro, for instance, restricting distances the lens will be hunting for focus will make obtaining lock significantly faster. There's also a switch position to flick to, which will automatically move the lens focus into the ideal one-to-one -one macro focus length instantly, also super handy. But can it live up to the expectations for stupidly good image quality that the 12 and 45mm primes have primed me for? Well, let me show you some of the things that happened when I pressed the shutter button with this lens on the front of a camera to find out. So, as we start going through these, I will mention that I shot all of these handheld, which is not really the ideal way to shoot macros. You really want a tripod for absolute steadiness. But... I was shooting these with the lens attached to an OMD EM5, and that thing has crazy good image sensor stabilization built in, so I was feeling kind of Superman bold. The lens itself handles really nicely. It's a plastic body, but the materials are obviously high grade. The focusing wheel is nice and wide, with a nice level of resistance. It is a fly-by-wire focusing wheel, but it's quite responsive and easy to control, which is damn important when you're in manual focus, shooting wide open at f2.8 and macro, and dealing with the wildly thin depth of field that leaves you with. Autofocus on this lens is fast and very accurate. Again, it really needs to be for macro shooting, so it shouldn't come as any surprise, really. It's not the fastest focus you'll see from a micro four-thirds lens, especially in unrestricted mode, but it is fast enough to be relied upon. It's also very quiet. Again, quite important for some types of subjects you're trying to get close to. This little guy is actually about half the size of your average mosquito. He is tiny, and the autofocus still nailed him the first time. That's impressive. The clarity of this lens is almost ridiculous, really. My jaw literally dropped open and my eyebrows shot up when I was examining the first batch of test shots I did. And even once I knew what to expect, I was still a little giddy on every good shot that came out of it. When focused out beyond the full macro mode, there's plenty to be excited about, too. Things stay super crispy at the focus point, and the background blur has an extremely pleasant aesthetic. And with light points, the bokeh shape is not quite perfectly round, but certainly very pleasant. 60mm, of course, isn't ideal for landscapes, especially on a micro four-thirds sensor, which has a two-times crop, so it's effectively a 120mm lens. But I like shooting landscapes, so I gave it a go, and even here, I walked away with shots to be proud of. Inside, with artificial light, the story stays consistent. The lens remains joyfully easy to work with, and snap after snap simply insists on delivering results that kept making my mouth do weird things and my eyes go slightly squinty. I've heard people describe this unusual facial torsioning phenomenon as a big goddamn grin, and I liked it. It's one of those very special lenses that delivers crazy pin-sharp images, but somehow also gives those very same images a wonderfully organic smoothness. It's not soft, it's just... I, I don't know the word to describe it, but look! Even shooting from the hip, this thing kept throwing amazingly well-rendered images right onto my memory card. Video mode, of course, doesn't hold it back. It's surprisingly easy to control, which, believe you me, is kind of rare when you're trying to shoot video with a macro lens, anywhere close to this focal length, handheld no less. 
While shooting, manually reacquiring autofocus is the work of a split second, and it's so quiet even the onboard mics will struggle to hear it. That I was impressed with. Now, I've kind of been splooging all over the place with compliments and praise in the occasional tortured metaphor, I know. So now is the time I like to try and bring things back down to earth with a list of things that bugged me about the lens. And unfortunately, there is one thing that I hated about using this lens. And that is the simple fact that this was a borrowed review unit and I do not yet have one in my own personal lens collection. And having seen what this thing can do for me, that's a little heartbreaking, don't you think? <laughs> Aside from that, I honestly can't think of anything to rag on. I wish I could, so this review would feel more balanced or whatever, but I can't. It's just brilliant. In every lighting condition, from pre-dawn to indoors to midday sun, it simply shrugged, muttered something that sounded a lot like, Is that all you've got? You call this a challenge, you great Jesse? And it just kept doing its thing. And I don't know why the lens has that accent inside my head. It just does. So yeah, if you shoot with Micro Four Thirds gear and need an amazing 60mm lens with stupefyingly pretty macro capabilities, this is the lens you should already be on your way to buy. And pick me one up too, will you? Please? <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.